A father receives a call at work telling him to come home because there's been an emergency. He rushes home. The front door is locked, so he goes around the house and enters through the back door. There he finds a bloodbath. His 18-year-old daughter is lying on the floor, bludgeoned, stabbed, and murdered. Nearby is his 16-year-old son, who has met the same fate. Fearing the worst for his remaining daughter, an orphan, who the family had recently adopted, he calls out her name, but she doesn't respond. She emerges minutes later, with wet hair. The father embraces her and first assumes that the wetness is blood, but it's not. She tells him that she has just taken a bath. He asks her what happened, and she responds that intruders killed her brother and sister while she hid under the bed. But the dad is suspicious, and rightfully so. Because as we'll learn, there was far more to this sweet, innocent orphan girl than anyone could have imagined. Welcome back to Crime A to Z, where we detail cases and criminals from their very beginning until well after other reporting ends. Today, we'll be talking about a case that reflects the true meaning of the word tragic. A family opens their hearts and their home to someone in need, only to have the person that they embrace devastate them in a way no family should ever have to endure. So sit tight as we bring you this shocking and heartbreaking case. And before we get started, if you like how we present this case, Please help us out by hitting like and subscribe. Let's go. The Mogwads were a close-knit, loving family who lived in Cotabato, a province in the Philippines. The father of the family, Cruz, was a high school teacher who taught at the local high school. And the mother, Lavella, was a principal at the local elementary school. As educators, they were not wealthy, but they lived comfortably. The couple had two children, and in 2021, 18-year-old Crizzle Gwyn was the oldest and was attending nursing school. While her younger child, 16-year-old Crizzle Luis, had his eye on becoming a lawyer. Both were honor students with hearts bigger than life. That same year, 2021, Gwyn met 17-year-old Janice Sebiel at an event they were both attending. Janice, who was sometimes referred to in the media as Christine, was there with the family that she worked for, who were friends of the Mogwads. Janice and Gwyn instantly hit it off. As the two became closer, both Gwyn and her brother Luis began to learn more about Janice's background. Janice shared that she was an orphan with no memory before the age of eight, she said that she was basically a servant working both day and night for the family that hired her. She looked after their two young children, cooked their meals, and cleaned up after them, all of which prevented her from pursuing her education. She said that despite her long hours working, she barely had any money. Both Wynn and Luis were heartbroken about Janice's desperate and unfortunate situation. So Gwyn pleaded with her parents to adopt Janice to give her a better life and allow her to finish school. The parents were initially reluctant since space in their home was limited, but their children felt so strongly about wanting to help this young orphan that they'd come to love that Luis even selflessly offered to give up his room so that Janice could sleep in it. He offered to sleep on the couch in the living room to make it happen. The parents finally gave in, figuring that they were called on by God to help this young orphan in need. Janice was welcomed into their home and moved into Luis's room. And by July of 2021, the adoption of Janice by the Mogwads was official. Both the parents and the children were all in. The parents treated Janice as they did their own children, showering her with love, support, and assurances that they'd always be there for her. And Wynne and Luis continued showing her the friendship and now sibling love that they were so eager to give her. You could see the camaraderie in the regular TikToks featuring Gwyn and Janice. And occasionally, even Luis. But it didn't take long, just five months, for all of that to change. It was mid-December, and the three teenagers were home alone while Cruz was at his wife Lavella's school, fixing some structures. Then, at 2.58 p.m., he received a phone call from someone, telling him, Go home. Do not panic. 
your house was ransacked. Cruz began the frantic journey home. In the meantime, Janice, surprisingly, took to social media and began posting statuses to her Facebook page. Just two minutes after Cruz had received a call, Janice posted the following. Guys, help me please. Somebody entered the house. I do not want to die yet. I am inside the room hiding. Please help. And then, one minute later, she posted again. Help me! Janice's boyfriend saw the statuses and immediately called her to see what was going on. Janice answered his call, but didn't say anything. Unable to get her to respond, he hung up the phone and did nothing. Apparently not concerned enough about the dire status his girlfriend had just posted to pursue it any further. Janice also messaged Lavella, saying, Mama, please help. Lavella called her back, but Janice didn't answer. It was right after that that Janice changed her Facebook name. She changed it from Janice Mogwad to JP. Cruz arrived home within 15 minutes of receiving the alarming call. As soon as he opened the gate of their home, he encountered a blood-soaked blanket along with a knife just outside their front door. He tried to enter through that front door, but it was locked. So, he went around to the back door. He entered and quickly discovered his beloved daughter, Gwyn, bloodied, beaten, stabbed, and murdered. And then he saw his beloved son, Luis, who had suffered the same brutal slaying, and was also hogtied and gagged. Knowing that Janice was also supposed to be home, Cruz called out for her, but she didn't respond. She emerged a few moments later, unharmed and with wet hair. Cruz initially thought she was hurt and that her hair was wet because it was bloody. But she told him that she took a bath after the attackers left to calm herself down. Police arrived on the scene within minutes and questioned Janice about what occurred. She reported that three men broke into the home to rob them. It first attacked Luis and killed him. She said that she then ran into a bedroom, locked the door, and hid under the bed. Then she heard them beat and kill Gwyn. Investigators diligently processed the crime scene. They immediately noted that the extreme brutality of the murders represented a level of high rage and anger by the attackers, which was not typical of a robbery. They identified broken bottles, a hammer, and a baseball bat at the scene, the latter two of which were determined to be the murder weapons. Both victims were bludgeoned with the bat. Gwen was also stabbed 21 times. Investigators noted at the scene that blood from her wounds had already dried up, and rigor mortis, or the stiffening of the joints that occurs after death, had set in. Ants had even already begun to ascend onto her body. Luby's had been stabbed 51 times, but the blood from his wounds was still fresh, and rigor mortis had not yet set in. It would take a medical examiner a full two days before they could complete the autopsy given the sheer volume and extreme extent of the siblings' wounds. It was that level of brutality that initially eliminated Janice from the radar as a suspect, with police figuring that such a seemingly innocent young girl could not possibly carry out such a heinous act. But they soon began to have their suspicions about the only survivor of this off-the-rails violent attack. And so did Cruz. For starters, after finding out that the hammer was used as a murder weapon, Cruz immediately noted that he, Gwyn, and Janice were the only ones who knew where the hammer was located. He stated, The hammer is mine. I placed it near the laundry area and only Christine and Gwyn knew it. Also, Janice's story about hiding in the room seemed implausible since the attackers had ransacked the room she claimed she was hiding in. Given the level of disarray in the room, if she were hiding in it, she would most certainly have been discovered. Next, once the crime scene was cleared, Cruz and Lavella searched their home to try to discover exactly what the alleged robbers turned murderers had stolen. But the only items they found missing were the phones of their murdered children. And then there were those Facebook posts that allegedly took place in real time while the attacks were taking place. Both the public and investigators found it odd that someone under such life-threatening peril would take the time and be of the mindset to write out such an extensive message, spell it all correctly, and even include sad face emojis during a time that should invoke sheer terror. 
Even harder to believe was that during the brutal murderous attack, Janice found it the perfect time to update her Facebook name. And of course, why had Janice taken a bath? While it was possible she took the bath to calm down, as she told Cruz, the more sinister speculation was that she was cleaning herself up after the brutal slaying and washing away evidence. Overall, most people found it inconceivable that someone would feel safe enough to make themselves vulnerable in a bathtub just moments after the brutal slaying of her family members. And then there was the fact that the siblings' times of death did not at all coincide with Janice's account of the events. Given the state of Gwen's dried blood and rigor mortis, it was clear that she was killed before Luis. Contrary to the account Janice gave of Luis being killed first. Lavella also noted and found it odd that the day of the murders was the first day that Janice had called Cruz and Lavella, Mama, and Papa. And others, not even close to the case, had their suspicions as well. Hearing of the brutal murder and not pleased with the lack of media coverage or arrests, the general public began trending the hashtag Justice for Mogwad's siblings to place pressure on investigators. Then, taking matters into their own hands, they, along with news organizations, began researching the origins of this mysterious orphan who appeared seemingly out of nowhere. That's when it was discovered that the orphan Janice was not actually an orphan at all. They unearthed a photo taken in 2013, which is believed to have been Janice alone on a ship. Numerous people tried to help locate her family, but they were unsuccessful. Nothing was known about her life or whereabouts during the years after that photo. But what a local news agency did uncover afterward was that Janice's biological parents, Michelle and Juanito Sibio, were indeed alive. They had separated years ago. And Janice also had three other siblings. Janice had been communicating with her mother via Facebook Messenger the entire time she was living with the Mogwads. Meanwhile, identification belonging to a 17-year-old male was found in Janice's room. Police called Janice in to ask her whether she knew the person depicted in the ID. To their surprise, she said yes, then proceeded to confess that she carried out the murders with the 17-year-old, who remained unnamed due to him being underaged. By this time, hard evidence had also began to come in, the most significant of which was that Janice's fingerprints matched the fingerprints on the baseball bat. Police tracked down the 17-year-old suspect and apprehended him. They found Gwyn's cell phone in his bag and learned that he and Janice had been planning the murder via Facebook Messenger for 10 days before the murder. Janice told police that she was jealous and angry of her siblings and that she murdered them for attention. And while Janice did not divulge many of the details surrounding the murders, she did divulge that at some point Wynne managed to escape the home briefly, but she returned to save her little brother and her little sister, not realizing that her little sister was behind it all. She also admitted that while she was stabbing Gwyn, that Gwyn cried out, This is just a dream. This is just a dream. I am still going to be a doctor. I don't know what wrong I did to you. Janice, I love you very much. After hearing Janice's confession, Cruz was convinced that Janice hated his daughter and wanted to take her place. He and others also recalled how Janice was obsessed with the movie, The Orphan, which depicted an orphan who was adopted and tried to kill her family. The case was closed in just six days. And in January 2022, Janice and the 17-year-old, both minors, were charged with murder. Both killers were found guilty and sentenced to 32 years in prison without the possibility of parole prior to then. The Mongwant parents were not satisfied with the lenient sentences the killers received due to being underaged. They noted that the light sentences would mean that their children's killers would walk free while they were still in their 50s, while Gwen and Luis would remain dead. Gwen and Luis were laid to rest in a custom gown and tuxedo. Once Janice's biological mother, Michelle, was tracked down, she shared how poverty had led her to not be able to care for her daughter. Janice's biological mother also visited the Mongwad parents to apologize for the actions of her daughter. She knelt before them and apologized. 
The Mogwads pulled her up and told her that there was no need to kneel, but asked if she could try to get Janice to give details about what happened that night. She tried, but was not allowed to see her. The Mogwad parents are trying to move on from the tragic death of their beloved children. In August of 2022, they opened a restaurant called Casa M&M, in remembrance of Gwen and Luis, serving some of their favorite dishes. They attend therapy and continue to try to heal, and they take comfort in continuing to love and care for others. We hope this video did justice to Gwen and Luis, and to their loving parents. We cannot imagine the pain and anguish Cruz and Lavella have endured. Our most sincere condolences go out to them. What are your thoughts about this case? Please share them in the comments below. And if you like how we presented this case, we'd really appreciate you hitting like and definitely hit subscribe so you never miss a single video.